Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Cravers and another video. And today we need to talk about something that honestly feels kind of unreal. Because thanks to the new custom GPU drivers for Snapdragon 8 Elite, we're now at a point where Switch emulation on Android is getting dangerously close to it just works. And it's not just Switch, PC emulation performance has taken a massive step forward as well. What we're gonna look at in this video is my AYN Odin 3 running a whole bunch of different Switch titles. And the short version, they run shockingly well. Even Tears of the Kingdom is getting a stable 30 frames per second, no tweaks, no hacks, no weird settings, just straight up gameplay. Now a quick heads up before we go any further, this is going to be a bit of a weird showcase. Because most of the gameplay you're seeing is masked or blurred, and yeah, that's because YouTube copyright is YouTube copyright. And certain <clears throat> companies tend to be extremely aggressive with claims even though nothing shady is going on. But trust me, performance wise, what's happening here is very real. You will of course see dips here and there when the shaders are compiling or loading, that's completely normal and that's how emulation works. And it happens on a PC as well. The important part is what happens the rest of the time. So in this video I want to show you just how far Snapdragon 8 Elite has come in just a few days and why these custom drivers are such a big deal and why handheld Android devices are suddenly getting very close to replacing a lot of dedicated hardware. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, let's start with something a bit more fast paced. This is Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, running on Eden emulator on Snapdragon 8 Elite. And this is actually a really good example of what's going on behind the scenes here. If you keep an eye on the stats overlay in the corner, you can see the current frame rate and exactly when the emulator is building and saving shaders. Every time you see a small dip or micro stutter, that's usually not the hardware struggling, that's the emulator compiling a shader and storing it locally on the device. And the important part is this, once the shader is built, it's cached. Meaning the next time you play the same section, performance is smoother, frame pacing improves and those dips basically disappear. That's why emulation almost always gets better the more you play a game. Even here during the first run, Crash 4 stays very playable with a solid performance throughout fast camera movements, platforming and combat. And this is without doing anything fancy. No custom per game tweaks, no experimental settings. This is just raw Snapdragon 8 Elite performance paired with much better GPU drivers than we have had on Android before. Two other games that run really well here are Hades 2 and Hollow Knight Silksong. These are what I'd like to call relatively easy to run titles and they were already performing great on Snapdragon devices even before the new custom drivers became a thing. And as expected, they both flow perfectly here. Smooth gameplay, stable performance, no tweaking required. Just pick up the device and play. They also happen to be a perfect fit for the Odin 3's OLED display. The colors really pop, contrasts look fantastic, and both art styles really shine on the screen like this. So while these games aren't meant to push the hardware to its limits, they're a great reminder of just how good the overall handled experience already is on a device like this. Before we get into the Nintendo stuff, I just want to show one more game, LEGO Horizon. And on the very first level, it actually runs pretty well straight out of the box. No tweaks, no special settings, just launch the game and play. But once you get a bit further in, you start running into some pretty major graphical glitches and rendering issues. Performance itself is still there, but visually things can break in a way that's hard to ignore. And this is almost certainly driver related, or possibly tied to a specific setting in Eden, not the hardware itself. I wanted to include this on purpose just to show that not every single game is perfect right now. And honestly, that's completely expected when we're talking about the custom GPU drivers that have been pushing updates for barely a week. If everything worked flawlessly already, that would be the really insane part. What matters is the progress, and even with cases like this, we're already way further than anyone expected this fast. Alright, so from here on out, you're going to see a whole bunch of Nintendo first party games. And as you can probably tell, most of the gameplay is blurred or masked. I leave a small part up top unmasked, mainly so you can still see the performance stats and the frame rate, but other than that, yeah, this is just how it has to be on YouTube. The important thing to focus on isn't the visuals anyway, but how these games actually run. You simply just have to take my word on that they look good. Now, another thing I want to mention here is the custom GPU drivers themselves. I'll be leaving links to the different driver builds in the video description, but you should be aware that the development is moving insanely fast right now. We're talking multiple updates per week, sometimes even multiple updates per day. And because of that, some drivers will work better with certain games, while others might give better results elsewhere. 
This is still very much an experimental phase and if you're not the kind of person who enjoys testing, swapping drivers and keeping up with updates, that's totally fair. The good news here is that if the development continues at anything close to the current pace, it's very likely that sometime in 2026 we'll have a set of really stable drivers that just works with pretty much everything. But even right now what you're seeing here already feels like a huge step forward for Switch emulation and PC emulation on Android, thanks to custom GPU drivers for Snapdragon 8 Elite. Regarding Link's Awakening, this one is actually a pretty big deal for me personally. This is the first time ever I have managed to get my own dump of this game running on Android without any of the usual graphical bugs or flickering. Stuff that's normally completely game breaking. Here it just works. Performance is excellent and visuals are stable and the game finally feels like the way it's supposed to. 
The only tweak I had to do was to install a no blur mod, because otherwise the entire image gets really soft and smeared. Kind of like what you're seeing here right now. But jokes aside, other than that this runs extremely well, and for the first time ever on Android, Link's Awakening actually feels like a proper, fully playable experience from start to finish. But let's be honest, you're not fooling me, I know exactly what most of you are really here for. Link's latest massive adventure, Tears of the Kingdom. And before I show you this, I just want to be clear about one thing. I spent a lot of time tweaking this, I tested different custom drivers, went back and forth between builds, tried mods like NX Optimizer, changed settings and tested again. And then, at some point, I decided to just reset everything to default settings, no tweaks, no special configs, and run it as is with the latest custom driver. And to my surprise, that's when I got the best performance I've seen so far. What you're seeing here is stable 30 frames per second with only occasional dips when shaders are compiling, which is completely normal. Other than that, this is 100% playable. And honestly, this is the best Tears of the Kingdom performance I've experienced on any device outside the original Switch and of course Switch 2. In a direct comparison, this actually runs better than my Steam Deck, which is something I did not expect to be saying anytime soon. And the crazy part is, this is happening after what's basically a week of active custom driver development. If this is where we're starting, I genuinely can't wait to see where things ends up. And with that said, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to the developers working on the emulator, thank you to everyone pushing these custom drivers forward, and thank you to the community for testing, reporting, and sharing results at an absolutely insane pace. This kind of progress doesn't happen by accident, it happens because of a lot of very passionate people are putting in a lot of work. I'll leave links to everything I've used in the description, but just keep in mind that things are changing fast, sometimes daily. And if you're not ready to jump on this train just yet, that's totally fine. If the pace keeps up like this, the future here looks incredibly promising either way. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more handheld and emulation content, and feel free to drop a comment if you've been testing these drivers yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.